Hi everybody, hello, no ga. Hi Gil. How are you doing? Okay. A new series of videos that we are launching now. We're gonna do boom psychology in movies, psychoanalysis in movies. And we're gonna start with the concept of the father archetype. And the, fa the father archetype, it's a concept, a Jungian concept, right? right. By uh, Richard Jung. <laughs> yes, Carl uh, G. Jung. Carl. Uh, Carl Gustav Jung. Gustav, ooh, yes. already I learned something new. Boom, boom. So Jung came up with the concept of the collective unconscious. Uh, it's one of the points of uh, division and uh, con like a controversy between him and Freud. One of the things that led Freud to kick him out of the institute. <laughs> Freud was uh, known to be intimidated by people who disagreed with him and had ideas that he thought might have something in them. So the main difference, the main beef was uh, right, that uh, Freud uh, was more into uh, inner psychology of the self mm -hmm. and Jung more of the group and social psychology of us together. And the father archetype is well, like one of the blueprints mm -hmm. to understand the way that we relate to our fathers. In all cultures. I mean, Jung, uh, he uh, researched the subject. He found many mm. archetypes that are, uh, that are common in all cultures. And the father archetype is one of them. I'm not a Jungian, so we're going to take it to our own direction and to our own mm. uh, lines of thought. So maybe the, one of the most famous father archetypes mm -hmm. from the Bible Abraham, mm -hmm. Avraham, Avram. Avram. And he is the father archetype of whatever the, the Jewish religion. Monotheistic. Uh, yeah, monotheistic. But the, but the father archetype that I want to start with is Christoph from one of my favorite movies of all time, The Truman Show. Truman. <gasps> he runs, runs the show mm -hmm. and he presents himself thusly. I am the creator of a television show. So notice the pause between the creator and the television show. So he is presented in this movie as the father god. I can hear you. He sees himself as the creator, which is uh, one of the characteristics of the father archetype, right? He's the creator. Oh, I have just a name for you. Pinocchio. He's also in charge of uh, the logos. He's the director. He's in charge of everything behind the show and... Uh, the elements. Mm -hmm. Water, sun, everything. Cue the sun. Everything he created, everything is something that he thought about and made real in a sense. And this is one of the things that we as children feel about our fathers. Right, right. that they know everything, that they see everything, that they create everything. Control everything. Yeah, they're omnipotent in a way. Whatever he wants, he can get. He controls everything, he sees everything, etc. And uh, he's like the, the, the God archetype also, in the sense that God is the Father, and uh, right. he watches the over father, us. The Father, the Son, right, so even in the Christianity. Right, and his also. name is Christoph, so we can say like Christ. And right. uh, In the Bible, uh, like Adam is made in God's image. Wow. So there's the whole concept of the narcissistic extension of the parent, like the child is a narcissistic extension. Boom. And, and this is how Christoph sees Truman. Right. He doesn't see him as a subject, as a, his own person. That's why he feels like he owns him also, because it's like he's a part of himself. There's no separation there. I know you better than you know yourself. Mm. So he can do whatever he wants to do with him, because uh, it's like an organ, of, you know, part of his body. I mean, he is in charge of it. He's in control of it. Right. And then he realizes that he isn't. Right, this is like also, so this is a metaphor for, uh, for growing up, right? As a, when you're a baby, the, you have no independence whatsoever, and the father, the parents, whatever, they can control whatever, everything that you do. Yeah, so, I mean, as parents, we always look at our children not only as, like, people that we would meet, you know, in a different kind of uh, life. Yeah. We see how their actions on how, or how they are project on us. They hurt my son! You right. see ki kids behave in a certain way. Immediately you ask yourself about their parents. Right. I mean, right. we get that all the time. They, and when they, you say that your child is funny, basically you're, you're saying, I made my child funny. Yeah, I made that. <laughs> therefore, I am funny. Yes. And therefore, I am this and that. Yes. The, the only people that you're not jealous of are your children. You want them to succeed more than you did. 
that's yeah, and that's uh, I mean the preferable, the, the preferable way, like the healthiest way. In the but we see them as something which projects on us. So if they succeed, we succeed. So I have another example of a different father, mm -hmm. on-screen father, Tywin Lannister, you might have heard about him. He's very com competitive with his children. Right. Did it ever occur to you that I might be the one who deserves your confidence and your trust, not your sons, to contribute to your legacy that you love so much more than your actual children? I don't distrust you because you're a woman. I distrust you because you're not as smart as you think you are. He even takes his son's girlfriend and makes her his own. Mm -hmm. And he does not seem to want them to succeed. So how does that fit in the father archetype? So the other part of the father archetype, I mean, Jung, there are always opposites. Like you have the father who is the creator. And of, of course, Christoph is also the other part. Like he's the creator, but he's also the destroyer. I mean, okay. at one point he almost kills Truman. So the father, the destroyer, is basically the father, I mean, if we go back to Freud, uh, the fear, like the Oedipal fear, is of the castrating father. He's the one that we want to, that the son wants to look like, he wants to be like mm. when he grows up, because he wants to marry a woman like his mother. Okay, but? But, but the father is also the aggressor, he's the scary one. Uh, he's the one that uh, you fear, and, and also, of course, Fatherhood has changed throughout the centuries and it used to be something yeah, much very more distant. Very distant, very authoritative, very. Right. right. You call scary. him father, not daddy. Right. Right. Yeah. And Tywin. To teach me humility, the gods have condemned me to watch you waddle about wearing that proud lion that was my father's sigil and his father's before him. Their failures and failings mm -hmm. for him project on him. Right. All of his children, the way that they behave, it makes him look bad. Right. That's mm -hmm. how he feels. And this is why maybe he's so uh, hostile mm -hmm. towards them. Uh, of course, you know, we all uh, want to love our children or other people unconditionally. Mm. But uh, we see that it, it has a lot of uh, conditions uh, in it. Like, if you are good, then I love you. Right. If you are this and that. And, and it's all part of the narcissistic extension thing. Because we can't stand the fact that they mirror something that we don't want to see. Or uh, that they do something which we don't want be, to be projected on right. us. So how about a very different father, Mufasa, mm -hmm. from The Lion King. He's a good father. He's a father a teacher who prepares his son for the world. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. And he's also the basis for morals. Right. I've got to teach my son a lesson. I guess it's unavoidable. There's also the sense of like the narcissistic extension in the way that of like the the monarchy, the lineage, mm. you know, it's so it's also present there. Right. And it's also a little bit intimidating, you can see with the uh, with right. imprint on the on the ground. Right, right. There's always the sense that, you know, you're on his good side, <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's always this kind of like tension. He sets a, a much more positive. Uh, positive example in the sense that uh, he prepares his kid he wants to shape him in his own image. He doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't allow him to, it's not like, okay, you grew up, you do your thing. Right. And then, uh, <laughs> no. but, right, uh, you, have to, you have to be this. Uh, with Mufasa, we can see that, uh, I mean, unlike Sarabi, which, you know, she just lets the kids play yeah. and do their thing. She's there. Yeah, she's there. Yeah, she doesn't do anything. She's just <laughs> there, of course, you know, yeah. And, you know uh, moms, they're just yeah, there. They're just there. Hi, mom. <laughs> and uh, so with Sarabi, you can see that uh, she acts on like the classical role of the mother as the one who tries to adapt the world to her kid, right? I mean, she's like, the mothers have this classical role of, oh, he's misunderstood, you have to do this, you mm. have to do that. They're he's a trying, good kid. He's, he's a good kid. kid. Yeah, they're trying to adapt the world to the kid. Okay. And the father is trying to adapt the kid to the world. Everything you see exists together in a delicate balance. As king, 
You need to understand that balance and respect all the creatures, from the crawling ant to the leaping antelope. Together they complement each other, in a way. Okay. So this what does is it mean, adapt uh, the key to the world? Teach him. Teach him, yeah, you have to, in this world, the world is like this, you have to act like that. If you want this, then you have to do that. You can't do this. It's a pity Bilbo didn't kill him when he had the chance. Pity? It was pity that stayed Bilbo's hand. Do not be too eager to deal on death and judgment. Even the very wise can see all animals. And it also has to do with like the, the solution of the Oedipo complex. The solution, according to Freud, is that uh, the child <laughs> accepts that there are rules, that he can sleep with his mother and kill his father. Oh, what? This is when he develops his super Tyranny. Ego. Tyranny, <laughs> yes. I mean, wow, you know, <laughs> so strict. So strict. Super ego. Yeah, he develops his super ego, which is part of the, the moral conscience. Before that, he didn't have a conscience. He just, you know, he, he either, when he was mm. a a baby, then he was just Eid, he right. was just like uh, his urges, urges. Yeah. yeah, like then the ego is like the reality principle, you know what you can or can't do, but you don't know why, you just know that you can't do it okay. or you'll be punished, so you have to postpone it, you don't know why, but the super ego is because you the, under values. the values, you, you understand why you can't do it, why mm. it's wrong, why it's hurtful, etc. Dad, don't we eat the antelope? Yes, Simba, but let me explain. When we die, our bodies become the grass, and the antelope eat the grass. And so, we are all connected in the great circle of life. There's another thing about Mufasa that maybe also relates to the father archetype and to the Oedipal complex. The son is very giddy on the possibility of his father dying because he wants to be king. Basically, he says, I can't wait until my dad dies. And then the dad dies. Yeah. And he thinks it's his fault. Right. Right. So killing the father. Mm -hmm. Also, if mm -hmm. we go back to Tywin, Tyrion mm -hmm. there literally kills the father. <laughs> he holds all the values. This is how the world is. My children. You disgraced the Lannister name for far too long. So what is this concept of killing the father? What does that mean? How does that uh, affect uh, us? And is it a necessary process of growing up? There is a lot of uh, discussion about that, like um, killing the father. And uh, I mean, we can see that also in different cultures or even, uh, you know, the criticism uh, towards uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, then and Dave killed the father, right? You know, uh, there's just a lot of like blaming uh, the Martin. The Martin. The yeah, he. The he. And he killed his father, the J.R.R. Tolkien. Right. And also, like, Jung tried to kill, for, you know, all mm. kinds of... Uh, Boom. Yeah. Boom. Definitely, Freud talks about Oedipal guilt. Tell them who is responsible for Mufasa's death. Murder. The fact that we didn't actually have to kill the father, just the fact that we had that fantasy, is already a cause for guilt. Oh, I just all sons, in a way, want to kill their father. And Simba fantasized about, yeah. about his father's death. And that's uh, like the, the biggest uh, threat of kids that also their fathers might leave or they, you know, they might die uh, at, at the Oedipal stage, that they would feel, I mean, that they did it. I mean, with Simba, of course, Scar says that he did it. I mean, of course, right. it's much more. And then he, he can't really face his, uh, his destiny or like his uh, surrounding anymore. He's so guilty and he's so full of shame right. that he runs away. Right. I mean, with Tyrion, it's a bit different because he was also older. He wasn't in the Oedipal stage. I mean, Simba he's was... Yeah, he's small. <laughs> so in a way, he never really grew up. But Simba is like really in the Oedipal stage. And that's much more detrimental to the psyche. I mean, Tyrion is a grown person. He can look back. He can say... If I was a father, I would have acted differently. And of course, you know, Mufasa was a good father. For, for Tyrion, his father stays there. It's more apparent in the books, like in his inner, inner monologue. And Simba, his father becomes a god. We said right about the godfather. He becomes an actual whatever god there in the, in the clouds, always with him. Mm -hmm. If we go to Star Wars, so uh, Luke Skywalker, he had Obi-Wan Kenobi. 
who got killed and then became also kind of a, like a godfather who speaks with him through the Force. Right. Use the Force, Luke. I mean, God is also, uh, he has these opposites in him, right? Like some would describe God as like this, uh, you know, Benevolent. Cruel son of a bitch, yeah. oh, benevolent, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. and also a cruel son of a bitch. Yeah, I mean, uh, those are the two sides of God. Also, sometimes he spares, sometimes he right. punishes. Yeah, and sometimes he's mad. Yeah, sometimes you don't want to vengeful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's uh, and there's also like this whole thing about you know heaven and hell and punishment and this uh -huh. and that. So, oh, those are also opposites. I mean, you know, uh, the fact that our fathers can be heaven or they can be hell in that sense. Mm. Conversely, uh, Truman doesn't kill the father, he wants to leave the father, right? He wants to leave the world that he has created, right? Yeah, but it's, it's like, uh, it's like it, he doesn't really realize it, but it's like killing Christoph. Destroy his TV show. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because that's also his identity, right? I mean, it's been like that for, uh, I don't know, 30 years, I can't remember how Truman... Yeah, 35 or whatever, or something. something like that, right? Yeah. And he's willing to die in order to grow up. And I feel that the end of the movie, when he goes out the door, the door is like the vaginal canal, whatever. It's like a birth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In many ways, when he killed the father, he, this is the moment that he that he is birthed. And Mufasa and Simba, when he comes back and deals with his uh, legacy and dead father, he is reborn, reborn or something else. And Tyrion also, when he kills his father, then he's made into something else. Also, Luke Skywalker, after Obi-Wan Kenobi who dies, then uh, the Force is in you and whatever. He mm -hmm. can shoot the Death Star. Right. Yeah. yeah so this is like a necessary step in order to be who you are. You have to get out of the shadow mm -hmm. of your father. But this is all just for sons, right? Sons and fathers. Yeah, but it's also, yeah, it's interesting because uh, it plays on the whole notion of separation and individuation as like the healthy process and uh, of development. Mm. And that used to be the, I mean, the most uh, common uh, way of thinking about it, about uh, growing up, the okay. separation and individuation. Now we don't think that it's like the, the separation mm. thing is like the, the highest uh, way of uh, development because we do think that people still need other people in their lives. When we break contact with our parents, it's not really a healthy thing. I mean, it's not like uh, other animals that, you know, sometimes they grow up and they don't recognize their, right. uh, or maybe, you know, yeah. not in that same way. We do need to be in contact with people who are important to us in our lives. Okay. The, the break from uh, Christoph is not a healthy one, right? right. Like, I mean, All ideally, of these breaks are not healthy. Right. Right, of course. Right, maybe it's just because okay, this is such a, such a strong uh, human theme mm -hmm. throughout uh, time. The complete cut or the complete separation is far more dramatic and far more common in literature, etc. Maybe that's why it's far more prevalent than uh, the healthier process, which would be in a way to gain also mutual recognition, you know, this kind of like uh, the father realizes that the son is in a way separate, like he's not an extension, but right. you can be separate and still in touch, or you can be separate and still close. You don't right. have to sep to be separate and distant. Right. Maybe just, just keep this, like recognize, be cognizant of that tension mm -hmm. and just deal with it and evolve together. Right. That but, sounds like a boring movie. Yeah, that sounds like <laughs> a very boring movie. But a healthy life. Yeah. Definitely. We don't mm. want the dramas of the movies in we our lives. We do not want. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Boom. Let's see the shadow here. As, uh, the uh, shadow Shautama. is another archetype. Is it not? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you thought it was a good first stab at this new series of psychology in movies. I had a good time. Uh, so let us know in the comments what you think of that series and also any ideas that you have for future psychology in movies. We're open to suggestions in the comments. Subscribe to get all our videos and we'll see you all next time. Bye everybody. Bye. Got Academy is sponsored by our patrons.